Welcome back, everybody. We are primed and ready to go for map number three on split. We'd be remiss if we didn't take a look back at the overall statistics for map number two. Again, a very weird start for T1 overall, but they bring back the first half nicely. And then the second half looked great. Skadoodle in specific in overtime. Super clutch, not only off the kills he was able to find, but mostly the fact that a lot of them were first bloods. He finishes off the game 30, 16, and 5 overall, Avril. An incredible stat line, to be sure. Yeah, playing differential there. Massive KD. 300 on the dot ACS as well. So, heavy perform. We saw how well he played in terms of the blaze storms coming through. Hit some nice operator shots. Overall, just a very good player. A couple of rounds that did go amiss, but, you know, we won't remember some of those. I also do want to mention Days as well. He found some decent kills through, you know, Odin's recon arrows, just revealing players, getting plays through the walls, through the floorboards. Um, he had a first kill, first death differential of 8 to 5, that's a plus 3, which ends up being the highest among all the players uh, in this lobby so far. Unfortunately for Thief, he went down 2 to 6 in that same differential, so he was not getting a lot of kills early on, and he was getting first blooded quite a decent amount. So looking over towards the LG side of things, Thief was the highest performing player, but he was also dying a lot early. Yeah, and just a couple of other updates here. Again, winner of this one makes their way into the quarterfinals, in which they will be playing up against Team Envy, who had a bit of a struggle getting past complexity. Dropped the first map, but were able to clutch up map two and map three. So for us here, Avril, we're going to split. And you were talking just as we were on break there from what that we have not seen T1 play this map uh, when they were at the Renegades Invitational. So the last time we had a chance to see them play it was by a way of about two months ago. But yeah. for Luminosity, being a little bit more active throughout the time since the Pop Flash Invitational to now, a little bit more to go off of. And our general takeaway is that that could lead to a potential advantage for LG in map number three. I, well, I mean, we'll see because I assume, you know, obviously T1 are going to be scrimming behind the scenes. They work with right. a new player. What I am looking forward to this map is the fact that both teams are going to be coming in uh, with somebody new. You have Marta on the side of LG, who they haven't, I don't know how much they play with them, to be fair. They have Spider, who's a fairly recent addition for T1. That's going to change the team dynamic. It's very difficult to go back to some of the old matches, even looking towards LG, who played in the Pulse Arena finals versus Mamba mode. It's like going back to that composition, that result, you don't even know how much you can take away from that that right uh on split because you know with the fact that venerator isn't playing today the fact that you have a new guy in there and then we have had some role swaps who knows what they bring to the table i do expect the breach to probably be played here but looking towards the t1 side of things they did used to play in pop flash they had a cypher plus killjoy on split that's probably not going to happen today they might play only cypher or only killjoy but not both yeah a bit of a guessing game as far as what we're going to get agent composition wise but what we do know is that for a lot of teams, this has to be a defensive side of the map. And, and, you know, back early on, you were saying that, what, like 8, 4, 7, 5 was achievable. From the offensive side, you're looking to get at least four rounds. But lately, a lot of teams that have been specializing and finding a lot of favor in this map have been able to win out the first half from the attacking side. And attacking first, I believe, will be T1. So as we jump on in and take a look at our compositions, it's going to look like T1, yes, is indeed on offense. The Breach will be there, like you mentioned. But how about the Triple Duel is set up for Luminosity with the Jet, Reyna, and Phoenix? Cover yeah, I thought maybe the Breach was going to be there for LG, but they're the ones that are not going to be playing it today. Still have a lot of flashes available, though. Triple Duelist, like you said, that means a lot less support. They will keep at least one Sentinel there. No double Sentinel for the side of T1, who are just going to replay the composition from the previous map. Minus Days, who's going to be moving over to the Rays. No Sova, of course, on this map. And just for win rate percentage as well, by the way, only 52% for the defensive win advantage, 48% for attackers. So it's actually not that big a difference. Rex gets a nice first blood onto KZ, who was coming up ropes very quickly and will be punished for it. Defensively now, the rotation is starting to make its way over to A as Brax finds another kill. That's the second. He's going to challenge backside screens and nearly gets a chance at Thief. Brought down to 58 HP. That's a nice blast pack coming out. It'll give an advantage to Days, who's able to take use of that. And it's been clean so far for T1. It'll continue to be so. Last player left alive will be Proto. He's in a position to maybe find one kill inside this dark cover, depending on how the timing works out. But the spike is going to be planted behind this hit, and there's really not a lot of hope, you feel like, for Proto spike here. Planted. Well, he's got two low health plays to go up against. Sadly, they're too far away at this point in time. AZK's nearby on full HP. It's a free upgrade onto the Ghost as well. But I'm going to really look towards what I'm seeing here in the compositions. I do favor T1's composition ever so slightly. It's more balanced. I'd also think that uh, Ray specifically on Split is extremely good. This is going to be one of Ray's other best maps next to Bind. So if you're going to play a Ray's at all, it should come through here. And the fact that Luminosity decided to go triple doors but not include a Ray's in there 
is a bit of a question mark for me because you have enough flashes between your one omen and then either the rainer or the phoenix but playing both does mean that i think their offensive side for lg is going to be better but the defensive side might suffer and over the course of the first strike event so far we have seen phoenix on split only nine percent of the time kind of reiterating how rare it is to see the phoenix be pulled out on this map we'll see how it works for them defensively you feel like they might be in a little bit of a softer spot but offensively a lot of extra tools to be used so we'll see that maybe leads towards getting more aggressive on the defense could be the case as at least for this round lg will try to full stack over towards a and they might be blessed with some opening kills here the shots decent brax up the back away help coming from the bottom side of sewers and LG will take their damage, take their orb, and try to back away. Although I hesitate for a moment because Thief wanted to go rogue for a moment and just solo child. And Mod is still there for at least one trade back, but this is fine if you're T1. You've got control of the middle of the map. You know that at least three members for LG are outside of A, and you could wrap this spike freely to B if you so chose. T1 have no idea that Luminosity have actually four stacked over towards A. Well, technically it was a five stack when Thief was still alive, and T1 are going to be playing into this one out right now. It could be dangerous. Close range with pistols. There is opportunity for LG to get a sneaky kill in. Spike is on Spider's hands as well for this heaven battle is where it really counts. KZ for one. Can't quite get the gun. Can't quite get the next kill as well. Now Proto by himself. Gets the first. The second one up top. He nearly had a chance at with the right click, but goes just a bit astray. So the first two rounds go successful for T1 on their offense. Like we mentioned, again, if you can find a way to start snowballing early offensively, you put yourself in a great spot to potentially close out the entire map, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We are going to get mostly full rifles, and yeah, there they are, full rifles purchased for LG. Behind the repurchases, T1 will bring three ARs in the mix with the double specters they held on to the round previous. This is where I think for T1 as well, they can play quite well in the defense. Also, you have the fact that AZK is on the breach, you have Days on the raise. Both these agents are going to be ex exceptionally good on the defense as well as the offense. Again, more of a balanced lineup. We're not seeing looking for more on the offensive half, I would say, rather than the defense. They have to perhaps rely more on retakes with the flashes or just trying to hold these angles with the flashes as well, trying to challenge with the flashes. However, this is the round that they really need to try and win. They have three rifles to play up against, like you mentioned, on T1 side of things. Currently committed over towards mid. No action on A at all. Spider just hanging around B main for now. Spike will be left mid map. You've got. Spider, who's playing B main, maybe to open up some space with a Paranoia or a Dark Cover. Thief will have to be shrugged off as a fault line comes through. Big 1v1 to open things up. Skadoodle will take that one. Again, the entry kills for Ska have been great lately. Now an opportunity for T1 to control B tower with the spike to potentially threaten onto the site itself. But you still have Proto in the mix with Mata on the site. And who's nearby? It's KZ as the jet over towards the back stairs. Casey is locked out by smokes for now though, just controlling the area to see if there's any opportunity to swing through. When the smoke clears, Proto on site, nice flash to come on in as well, Proto is going to get a kill, a second one of the days. Things are looking left. much better for Luminosity one now, Casey will drop over, and just as I say it, LG are down to only one. Stella, reasonably far away, Spike is not in the hands of any T1 members, and Stella might get a kill, his position revealed, and Brax will swing just a little bit later, working with Skadoodle whose life was forfeited, but Brax will get the kill regardless. Proto has just been, he's so slippery on these B-side holds when he's essentially by himself, just dancing with his cyber cage as if he's been a professional dancer for years with them. It's just, he finds these kills that you think they're just going to be like, they're goodness. I mean, that's going to be enough, but unfortunately, the two were not enough this time. So 3-0 up is T1 early on the offense, and Luminosity, after the full purchase came through, very short-sighted as far as their economy coming to the next one. They'll go with a couple of pistol upgrades to Sheriffs, but this is tough, man. This is a really, really tough situation to start off with your LG. If LG can win a Thrifty, they save the situation, but very likely they're going to go down now for an O spider with the opening pick. T1 in a very good position to be able to continue this. LG, if they can get some damage done. I mean, there is a possibility where a player like Marta maybe picks up the runner back here, does something with that. Thief is on 20 HP. It's unlikely to get a kill to be able to heal back in. I mean, this is where you can get the train started for LG. Just find a yeah. couple of kills somewhere. They are setting up over towards mid, trying to trap players, and a lot of pings coming through as well. Might be pings coming through on Brax. I mean, both teams are certainly pinging. Luminosity want to set up a trap towards mid, but T1 have gone towards B, and they should look for a closer. Yeah, I don't know if the, you could really call it the train started or if it's already left the station. 
As here's T1 on B very quickly, still lingering as Brax. He will not confirm the kill into KZ, but gets him down to about one bullet. Thief also in very dire straits. Has the ability to get some leers off to come on through. Scott holding the close quarter. That's a free kill for him. AZK behind that was able to find not just one, but now a second kill. And Stellar nowhere to go. T1. These have been clean takes. Now, granted, again, you're on pistols if you're LG, but all of these four rounds have been convincing. You take a look at just the kills across the board. Outside of Proto's double that he found the round previous, no one really has kills to speak of. Yeah. I think T1 have fired up for sure. I mean, you look at what happened on Ascent. We talked at length about that 5 and 0 start. T1 are threatening the same 5 and 0 start. I did say on Ascent, if it wasn't for the 0 5 start, T1 would have just won that half. Where they, sorry, they would have won the second half. And they would have won that map in a much cleaner fashion. They still get the map towards the end of the day. Now we get to see what T1 can do with a 4 0 start. KZ on the operator, but no customers early in. A little bit too late for T1 now. Looking over towards mid and B, KZ swapping up locations, just playing a little bit safer. Shadows traveling. Rotation coming through for Stellar early over towards B Tower. Three man stack coming over the middle of the map, and it's actually Thief who's here. Inside a dark cover for now, but depending on the timing, he might find not just one, but maybe a second, but he's not going to challenge the angle. T1 also not contesting through mail. And they're going to back up, collect the spike that was left over towards Ramen, and make a play potentially through B main. You still have Brax lurking over towards A, though. A lot of time has been expended right now. LG have ultimates to work through here as well, notably the run it back, and I do assume that at some point where they maybe want some info, whether they get some info and then make a runner back play off of that. They currently don't work with a lot. I do believe there was a camera ping over towards B, so Spider's location has been revealed, but that doesn't tell you anything because Spider always lurks B anyway. So as we head to the 30 second mark, 30 I think Team 1 need to make a call. And here they go. Ska free through mid mail. Mata's not watching this whatsoever. Zeller up top is going to be able to put that. Here comes Thief for one, two, make it three. Beautiful timing on the pitch. A lot of those still fall. Stellar try to respond, and they will find the fourth kill. No time for days. He'll back away and Ten save the Vandal. left. And I think T1 just didn't really develop anywhere on the map quickly enough. They eventually just commit over towards mid. They can't even clear vents. Thief is not even allowing days to get out with his life. No gun for him or T1. Four kills, and that will also now charge up the Empress. He was already at four out of six, so the last two ends up being overkill in terms of the ultimate. <laughs> that was a big buy for Luminosity. Again, they walked into that one for the operator. KZ just kind of went AFK there because no one came towards the sight lines at all. T1 will still be able to forward more. It's not going to be an 05 start for Luminosity. They will be able to pull back one. Ultimates on both ends looking pretty deadly. And this time around, you need to see T1 maybe develop an area of the map a little bit more aggressively or at least more timely because you don't want to be caught at 30 seconds and then suddenly running into B Heaven. Well, the good news is you've got a showstopper and a rolling thunder to do just that if you so choose to use them maybe early in the round to take control of some of these portions of the map that they've struggled to get into. Aftershock comes out. Thief going to read the boom bot down low. Those are the least two players, but can't respond and doesn't like that he's sitting up here. The paint shells will flush him out, but he'll stay healthy. Mata curveball wants a challenge again, but you got to be careful here for your LG. You need to hold on to this position, and here comes the showstopper through. Days will find one with it, and now the B tower take is coming. Mata's going to try to stall for as long as possible, while also healing up marginally off his blaze wall. The blaze wall doesn't really last too long, though, unfortunately. Which means B Heaven can still go the way of T1. Again, they can force this one in using the Rolling Thunder if they wish. There's only one play there, but it gives them 100% control that can't be contested. That's the big deal right now. KZ tried to look towards Vents just to see if anyone was going to go in that direction. Is now going to greet the rest of the defenders on his own team here. Maybe get advanced position. Doesn't want to be too far forward. Again, the Rolling Thunder might come through any second big now. Pick. And here it is. And the Rolling Thunder comes out in timing. It's not going to be great to clear off the left. tower because KZ's back the way. Can he find a third? No, AZK shuts him down. Now over to the site we go. Stellar cleans up the tower. It's down to Mata and Proto on the site. Spider finds the first and gets the second. So now off the Stellar top, he drops the Spike Carrier for the 1v1. From the Shadows comes through, but you know the Spike is down. You know that he's got to play for this. And though you should know Ten that. Seconds left. Stellar... He's going to make sure that nothing's coming from behind. Time the big consideration. Five seconds. Spider has to lock this down, and now Stellar can play for the post plant. He's going to bait the Shrouded Step teleport. Spider will dark cover himself. Stellar's already back on the site, though. And both players will back up to respective corners. 
No paranoia for Stellar. Has two dirt covers if he wants to try to use them. One will be placed. Stellar should Spider holding the corner. Will get the peek and find the third kill. Big clutch from Spider. Stella could have altered just to check Spider's location. I mean, you can either alt towards B main, alt towards the back of B into pit, and just see where he is, and you have that advantage available. Also, by the way, Stella played that super defensively, very conservative in the positioning as well, allowed Spider to get a very easy plant. Not a lot of time was left. You have to consider that right towards the end there, at about seven seconds, Spider pretty much has to go for a full stack. There's no way he fakes it. And there is a moment there where Stella can get advanced positioning. He doesn't have to directly swing on Spider, but he can get himself into a really good position to get the kill on the Spider regardless. But ends up being in a position where he allows the Spike to come and get planted and then can't do too much from there. Spider opens up with another kill for this round. So Spider really doing some work now. Yeah, and LG's not able to get anything going aggressively on their defense. That was a push through B main. Nothing pans out. B tower completely open. Proto and Mata on the site again. Can they hold stronger this time around? Proto already taking out a 10 HP. Trying to work their way in is going to be Thief. What's going to be with an operator? Yeah, it sure does. He finds the first kill. Proto can't convert into the Skadoodle. Stellar trying to flank. Timing. We'll actually get the kill into Easy K. I thought for sure he would have had the kill for free, but Scott will plant and we'll get a 1v3 for Stellar. And this one's going to be much more difficult than the 1v1 versus Spider from a little bit earlier. Looking at money as well. Stella with only 700 in the bank. Most of his teammates have even less than that. If they can find KZ's operator, that would be good. He'll get one kill. 15 HP, though. Again, the ultimate is available. I don't know how much he wants to commit. Thinks about it. One kill might just be enough. That uh, operator, by the way, that uh, KZ had, that's now in the hands of, I believe, Skadoodle. So T1 will be happy to pick that one up as well as the round. No, sorry, it's in the hands of Brax. And Brax yeah. might give it to Skadoodle. Might also hold on to it. We know Brax snipes as well. Scott trying to exit. He will actually drop the Operator for him. Actually, you know, the Operator will just be dropped. No one's going to pick this one up coming into the next round, so... Not atypical as far as the desire to have more AR pressure than sniper pressure offensively, but... I'm on the a... attack, maybe? Yeah, and, and as you're in a 6-1 tally, T1, you just don't change anything. If it ain't broke, don't fix it right now, especially considering that LG's going to have to go into a save round. Save round with one hero rifle here for Stella. Five ultimates as well, so that's actually quite doable. If they can find advantages, get opening picks. We've seen what teams can do on hero rifles before. And that's going to be hero rifle, plus the fact that you have a few sheriffs in there, plus way. some armor to play with as well, plus they and all the ultimates. And it's a hero rifle, but not on the Empress available, Reyna. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> I was trying to. KZ, though, of course. Bladestorm, oh boy. Nice little jump peek there on the daze. That'll do well for first blood. The hit looking to go for the one of the first times so far this offensive side towards A. Come Round two out. was set this direction. This one looking to be pretty primed to go that way as well. Skadoodle already into the site. Stellar, though, able to find one pick. That's over towards a ramp. So now big numbers for LG. What would be a thrifty round? Well, maybe not because the rifle was purchased, but... The patience pays off. KZ jumping over the top. Can't lock down the final shots into Scott. This would be a 1v4 for him. Not going to commit for the plant. Now finally we'll stick, but I just don't know how you clutch this one up in this position. They should run it back just to be safe here. Yeah. They have that available. There's no point holding on to extra ultimates, but you know what? Thief will just get that kill. Skadoodle. It's not going to be up to 1v3 clutch here, man. It's really interesting to get that kill to KZ. And you have to credit KZ to be the one to open things up here. KZ got number of early kills via Bladestorm. Now guns in the hands of the other players. Stella was the only one that purchased into well, I say purchased. He saved up the rifle from the previous round into this one. So no one had actually purchased into the round. So it doesn't quite count as a thrifty, but you count it as an eco win regardless. And three free guns walking into the next round is a feels good for Luminosity, who at this point in time needs some feels good moments because they are still down four rounds. Big bounce back round though for LG to try to turn this half around. And like you mentioned, no the run it back still available. The Empress still available. On the opposite side for T1, all you have is a Neural Theft for now. Run it back will be used aggressively. Curveball going to free him to make a move through the middle of the map. But this is just really 
bold and pretty predictable if I'm being candid here. T1 will just back away. It's a lot of information, a lot of space cleared, and at least the good news for LG is that you use that right back to take away the little map convincingly. Thief and KZ are pushed forward, but that leaves not enough numbers on the site itself. Mana does well to find once. Kadoodle able to take him down no problem, and that's going to be a full clear of the B site. I haven't quite gotten the guns yet. Read. Thief will take down Brax. That's a, like you said, excellent read in terms of getting down the Lurker. Keeping numbers competitive here. If things get dicey, there is still the Empress available. Just taking some time though. Luminos need to be in position. And Skadoodle is so strong on the blade storm. It doesn't even need to be set at this rate in time. Two versus three. And at this rate, I do think the Empress needs to come out. Stellar. Moving forward, but no, Thief is just going to stick this. He's just going to run right on forward. Right click misses. Spider, though, able to get one. Thief, though, able to get the dismiss off. Now on top of the spike. It's going to be a fault line to come through, and Thief nearly got a chance for the 1v1. But AZK puts it down, and T1 go up 7-2 from the offensive half. And I don't believe that AZK actually had a Rolling Thunder to start with. He was 5 out of 7. I think he only maybe got the two kills that enables the Rolling Thunder right on the last kill on the Thief. So there wasn't even a situation where, look, if Thief goes for the defuse, the wrong Thunder comes on through. You have to start looking at those situations now. Again, when we get to very critical numbers, low numbers as well, you have to look for what possible advantages you have to try and win that. And yeah, that's when the ultimates need to come on through. And I think players are maybe just forgetting about that for now. It is going to be Marshall for KZ, not the ideal weapon, but a single headshot could be very good. Might be hard to find though. Tagged up, 13 HP, not a good start for KZ. And he doesn't connect with his shot either, so T1 will be gifted the middle of the map. You still have Brax lurking over towards A. He's actually used a lot of his utility just to move up towards Rams. He's looking for a kill. And if he could actually push forward and maybe get this confirmation into KZ, that's a lot of the map in possession for T1. How about this, though? LG going to switch things up. A late push through B main with a triple stack. But T1 is already geared up, looking to execute over to A. Problem is, Casey's about to just give up Heaven. There's no way he can hold it with 13 HP no and a Marshall. So Heaven's basically gone. He knows it as well, so he's backed up quite a lot. That's the Rolling Thunder. At least it will miss everybody, but they will confirm information now. From the Shadows onto the site. Casey down to Daze. I know it the Shadows did get cancelled. Well, and Stellar has done well to find another elimination. Paranoia comes through. If you can find Sky, that'd be incredible, but not going to be able to grab that. So now a brilliant opportunity for T1. 4v3. Ska has information on where Proto is positioned. Fault line will just barely not connect with him, but they gain control of the backside screens. And now for LG, your retake is all hinging on success from the front. Thief on the way in, still has the Empress by the way. Mata still here with him. Curveball will free them forward. A couple of shots will tag, but Mata, nice snap for the first, can't get AZK. Neural theft for Proto in the 1v2. Just underneath the 100 from the HP. It's information on one player up top. That'll shrug them back. Tries to chase for the kill, but can't confirm. So now Proto through the elbow, able to find the last bullet needed, but time becoming a problem. And for AZK, he's going to rewrap over. Proto gets the kill, but he doesn't have enough time. T1 will win the round and go up eight to two. AZK got baited there. He swings around on the first tap. When the time was going to run out, there's no way a Proto can actually go for the full defuse there if he starts to try for it. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I'm very surprised about that situation. Anyway, though, it doesn't matter. T1 win the round. AZK will just die. I guess that's the only consequence. He's just trying to secure it. Can't blame him too hard. It's just, you know, the min-maxing here would have said that potentially uh, it could have gone the other way. I think they both die anyway with the spike, so it ends up not being a huge deal. 8-2, to two, though. Showstopper available. Two Spectres, three Rifles, five Pistols for Luminosity, and a Dream to try and hold on to the last two rounds of this half. Thief mid map, hoping for something blessed. Blinded. Not gonna find. Oh, actually, he does find one. Skadoodle though with the instant trade. So four v four we go. No chance to pick up the weapon. T one aggressing on to B tower. Just underneath is Mata, trying to play right around the vent or but the ropes rather. He's actually going to go up with these cloud bursts to free him into a position to maybe catch one off guard. Nope, never mind. Azk was very privy to that information, and so T one will be up now four v three. Make it four v two. Not expecting much from the pistols this round. Luminosity will be very much aiming for a 3 9 finish on the opening half. Again, not great for the defense. Defense is favored 52% to 48. It's not a massive difference, but I mean, it's it's not 3 and 9 either. So, Stella, no kills there. <laughs> T1 
White will be able to just clean this one up, go for the plant. I say clean it up, a proto will have a nice spot you'll put him for that one, but won't get too much more done after that. Brax with a challenge. Able to collect himself up a last sheriff, and like you mentioned, half. last round for the half here, and KZ will actually invest into the operator this time around. Full ARs to support him. T1 obviously able to match up with that full ARs dead. of their own. Ultimate wise, they're looking at the showstopper and the potential of a blade storm for Ska. Meanwhile, Thief is still holding onto the Empress, and yes. Seller on the other side has the From the Shadows as well to use. Scar at any point pulling up the blaze storm is going to be forced to be reckoned with. So 14 6 so far. He what got 30 to 16 in the last yeah. map. That could go way over time though. There it is. Instantly Scar's going to pop that one through. Isn't going to waste any time. KZ, no early customers. Oh my goodness. Scar actually misses. We'll get traded by Days though. Keep things for the ball. Ah, the curveball peak for Mata. A bit over ambitious. Days will punish. 4v3 now for D1. Nice shot from KZ as he instantly is able to tailwind away. Stellar now over towards male stairs. If he pushes into this start cover, it might be an opportunity. And yeah, AZK just essentially face checked it and will lose his face because of it. So now 3v2 the opposite way for LG. Shadows traveling. We'll see if this is winnable for T1. Two versus three. Spider doesn't quite have ult available. So is a flash, so that's going to be important. Needs to instantly link up with Brax. Brax is fairly advanced towards a ramps right now. KZ is going to be there with an operator. So there's a potential where one of them do get picked off. KZ's kind of fallen off that angle. Might be able to get a timing on screens. Oh, this could be really dangerous. Gets the shot in, but does not connect. Even takes a bit of damage in return. But they do know now that T1 are moving towards A. 30 seconds Without left. Without clearing over the A tower, T1 are going to have to use both dark covers just to get onto site. Brax with the first one forward. KZ hoping for a spam shot. Not going to connect either. 20 seconds remain. Spike can be planted closer towards the elbow. Brax is going to try to position himself to watch the potential push through screens. Paranoia is still available. But nothing for Brax to set up for the post plant. As you could maybe think about using from the shadows here to check information. It's a scouting tool at worst here. KZ doesn't know where to look. Checks towards left, but can't get the kill into Brax. Here we go. One does get the trip away. A proto needs to get this kill. A proto does not get the kill, and Stella falls as well. Two versus three, limited time, limited resources, and T1, 10 to 2. This is really, really dire for Luminosity. Can you yeah. come back from a 210? I'm not sure, but we'll take a look back at least here as GoPuff recent replay from the first half comes out. Scott, in this moment, again, critical as far as being able to take this B site so many different times. AZK with them as well. As I don't believe we meant to have that much slow, uh, that slow motion. So we'll come back <laughs> over and get into this round here as we'll take a look to see if Luminosity can get things going. Frame on that. <laughs> I need to know if uh, the foot went over the line. Otherwise, I'm throwing a flag and as... Uh... Yeah, man, 10-2 is... You don't really feel good about that. I think Luminosity were really banged for the 3-9, which also doesn't feel great. Now, Luminosity better hope they have the best attacking half ever because yeah. this is looking like a T1 victory. But we'll see. First attempt will go over to A. There are four defensive members that can deal with this quickly if you're T1. Days specifically is challenging over through the backside of screens and doesn't like the look of that fight. Still has a boom bot available, by the way. Proto trying to stay alive over towards A ramp, but gets overwhelmed by three T1 members. Spike does go down. So now an opportunity. As Luminosity, you're going to be hard pressed to set up a very stable post plant setup. You've got two members who are challenged through the backside of A screens. And then three from the front through ramps. KZ, oh my goodness, that fault line connects and KZ falls quickly. LG, you're going to have to respond to all this pressure at once. And it's likely not going to come through. Last one is Thief, no chance there. Three members looking at him and plenty of time for a defuse. T1 take the pistol and like you mentioned, now it's going to have to be miraculous for Luminosity. I wonder if Luminosity just forced now because if you don't force now, you give away 12 and you force on the round that T1 have 12. Which then means you have to play perfectly. I think it would be better to force now. Keep T1 at a potential 11. Look, you probably lose anyway. Unfortunately, I do have to say that. And there it is. They are going to force. So I think it's better to go for the win. Play for the win instead of playing not to lose. Playing not to lose would be to save now. Playing to win would be to force right now. And what I can say is LG's comp 
is very much suited for taking sites. One thing they will be able to do quite well, even better than what T1 could do with their comp, is actually getting onto a site via the five total flashes they have oh, is so going to be nice good. Spot. Holding onto the site in the post plant, however, is going to be tough. Mid map stack here for LG. Trusting Proto to lurk. He normally is great in these situations where he lurks, but I think Skadoodle's going to read a lot of information off this. Still takes the challenge, and okay, now thinks better of it as he tailwinds away. He actually stays full HP as he's holding on to the just light armor. He's got a little bit of help as Daze was able to toss the paint shells, and it actually did find a bit of damage on the secondary explosion, and Daze from on top of the rope will find first blood onto KZ. LG going to be shrugged off this angle through mail. We'll have to consider what they want to do, but it's not a great option really anywhere right now. You push forward into three members, or you push back into AZK holding over topside ropes over to A. LG has stacked up too hard here. They're now going to try and break through into heaven again after going quiet for a little bit. Now they saw flashes available. The paint shells nades is gone. Nice kill to Brax to just confirm a little bit of extra pressure for and for now. And the extra flashes are going to come on through. They should be able to get sight. Dazed is there. they got to deal with Dazed that they do. Oh, nice shots from Stellar. Even better from Proto to lock down the kills. Now LG will get this spike planted without left. much problem whatsoever. Thief is going to lurk mid-map. Over to ramps in this area by mail. And for the retake attempt, T1 is going to be able to get up to a tower. But are you actually going to take the time to clear off the mail? That's the real question. Mata will deny it. Thief now looking to peek, picks up an SMG, and then snaps to the head, no problem. LG, nice bounce back around here. Yeah, well played in terms of just showing a bit of patience there, surviving against all the utility. They baited out a number of jet smokes from Skadoodle, pink shells from Dazed as well. Just surviving against the early util, getting a couple of trades in there, making sure they stay competitive in terms of kills. Rifle for KZ right now, look at where T1 are. They're thinking about what they want to buy. Skadoodle's going to have... The early stinger into light armor. So they want to stay competitive, but this is where LG can get number four. It is a long, hard road, a big mountain to climb to actually get a comeback started, but it requires yeah. keeping T1 away from 12. If they can keep T1 at 11, it's possible. When T1 get to 12, it's not really possible anymore. T1's going to clear out space, B main aggressively on their defense. AZK up top just with a shorty. He's just looking to trade out his own life while Spider is still going to be playing over towards mid vents. Dark cover will allow him to move a little bit further forward. AZK is going to be challenged here, but he's going to have some help as Daze has come back with Skadoodle from their adventure through B Main Garage. But LG will back away and try to rejoin with Proto over towards the A site for potential hit. AZK is holding with a shorty as well. He's on the front over towards B Tower, but that's not where Luminosity are. Number of cages here. Brax on the camera will get first contact in terms of knowing what's up. That's actually an excellently timed smoke, however. We'll get beaten. The cages come through. Brax needs to start spamming. Gets oh. through the spam as well. That's pretty decent. And he stays alive. Look at all the help that's coming forward. Now AZK with the shorty up top is in a position where he can drop down, find one for free, and get a one second call. doodle there for the assist. Able to swap that out for an SMG, but everybody's trying to back away. Casey will find left. one in return, but this is a 2v5 situation with only 25 seconds to play. Made easier by making it 2v4. They need to be able to open up some space up top. Spider for one. Continuing to spam, but it's Skadoodle on the backside to get the kill. You needed to keep T1 off of 12, you said, Avril. LG not able to do it. T1 on match point. And how many kills does T1 get through the smoke there? It's ridiculous. Sprax starts things out, just spams through with the frenzy and lives. He gets out of the way. You see Spider do the same thing. You see the AZK shorty coming on in, getting a double kill, one tap onto one player, second tap gets a second as well, and Luminosity in a round that they should have won are going to end up dropping it, allowing T1 to get 12, and now it better be running back into a round win, into then a further eight round wins to go into an overtime, because otherwise T1, 13-3 is possible, even a 13-4 I think is fine. Joke's over! You're dead! <laughs> Run it back for Mata. Curveball's coming through. Paint Shell's trying to respond. Deals a lot of damage to Boombot also being placed. But that's information at least that, okay, here is the setup. We know that Raze is sitting backside B. We also know that Skadoodle's playing on top. And Thief just takes the raw challenge. Wins it versus Skadoodle. But on the backside of the site, Daze is able to respond with a kill of his own. 4v4 we go. And LG are still not in a position where they have even remotely taken this site yet. 
Stella, by the way, has the spike over towards B main. Currently, he's unknown. There's going to be a lot of pressure coming through for LG on the top side. Stella needs to come through the back end now. Do something about the situation. Days will be smoked off. Now, they can actually go for the plant. Flank, though, is open. Proto needs to win this 1v1, or they might just go down. Proto doesn't even get a bullet off, so now Spider up top has an opportunity. Mata has to hold this position. A 3v2 retake, pretty imminent. Most of it coming through B tower. Mata, can you find time? And Haki misses an angle where you might have had a chance to take down one as it was a fault line being charged. Mata, no chance to respond from the high ground. And T1, after dropping map number one, four to 13, and the opening five rounds to Ascent, which were questionable as far as the Defenders economical decisions win. that were made, they bounce back, take it 15-13, and then clutch up no problem here on Split. A very convincing map for T1 as they move on. Yeah, who cares about a 13-4 when you can get yourself a 13-3? I mean, that That's was true, so partner. dominant coming through <laughs> from T1. Just showing what they're made of here. So I guess uh, you know the memes kind of end after this split map you look at the first two LG are dominant then they're super competitive and then they fall apart on split and you have to revisit ascent a little bit because the fact that we go to it over time first of all visit the fact that the first half you did have that 5-0 start it ends up yeah. being evened up and then you go into the again the, the halves end up being 5-7 so I mean they are as close as you can get to six and six without actually being six and six and then you have the case where we go to overtime and in overtime you have to say at that point anyone can win but t1 were edging thing, things out t1 has started firing up and we get to split and of course they are well and truly fired up well if you case you missed those first handful of maps we'll take a look back as the recent replay provided by gopuff will come across your streams here and again this bind was all lg an all LG early, mind you. Their offensive half saw success on the spike plant in almost every single round with the exception of only two that I could count. And then they go over to the defense, they win the pistol, and from there on out, LG had no problem. But it came on the back end of a couple of incredible plays and T1 just didn't look like they were ready for this matchup. GoPuff, by the way, the official delivery partner of Nerd Street Gamers. Use promo code Nerd Street when you sign up on GoPuff and you'll get four dollars off your first four orders. GoPuff ordered in seconds, delivered in minutes, and plenty of minutes being played on this particular half as well. This round, this entire map, 15 13. Skadoodle played super well. Headshot connections, 4K clutches. And that is when actually T1 started to make their comeback happen on this particular map as yeah. well. I mean, they were 05 down, they get a one round, converts onto two rounds in a row, and suddenly things look much better. Over in the next six rounds, it starts 5 0 for Luminosity, and then in the next six rounds, it goes 5 1 before LG pick up the final round and number 12 to make sure they can confirm a 7 5 lead. But uh, to go from 5 0 to only 7 5 doesn't feel good. So I think the biggest questions to me don't take place on either bind or split, where one team was just heavily favored. It actually comes down to the close map of Ascent, where, you know, the little details matter, the small. Mm -hmm. Uh, different changes here where either team could have adjusted slightly and we would we would have had a potentially different outcome. Yeah, and just as we come to a close, uh, we'll just give you the quarterfinals rundown. So Sentinels will be playing up against Gen G tomorrow. It's a 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time matchup. That will be also played at the same time as Envy and T1. And in the lower side of the bracket, TSM escaping a map three versus Renegades will find themselves playing 100 Thieves who were able to Let's be honest, a surprise Dignitas a touch, a 2-0 win for them in that matchup. And then to the bottom side of things, how about this? Cloud9 Blue will be playing up against the slimy Boogerman, who were able to yep. take a surprising win, I think, for some against Cloud9 uh, White. And then beyond that, a map three win versus built by gamers. So those are your final eight teams that are left. With that in mind, there will be the mainstream broadcast coverage along with the secondary stream. So for all the guys that were out there that were running their own community streams, very well done to all of you guys. I hope that you all enjoyed the community casters coming through and bringing extra broadcast coverage throughout our first two days of coverage. But that's what's geared up for us going into tomorrow. Uh, any particular matchups that you're looking forward to in specific, Avril, yeah. uh, before we sign off? I'm glad you asked because I wanted to bring this one up. This is actually quite important for me. Uh, you have T1 versus Envy. Why is it important? It's going to be T1 versus Food and Thrashies. That's why. Tune into that. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Again, a lot of storylines still to be written, but the big one coming off of the day is the fact that if you finish top 16, you are into the group stage portion of the closed qualifier that will be coming up November 4th to the 8th.
course, that's Kevin Avril Walker. I've been Alan. I hold shift out of Frio. A big shout out to all of you guys who tuned in throughout the day, especially if, again, you're watching multiple streams. Make sure you're back tomorrow, same time, same place. As we look to wrap up the round of eight and get ready to go for semifinals and then grands the days following that. But for now, we hope that all of you guys out there keep holding it down. So long.